All right, I'm ready. I'm ready to talk about the missions. Estas listo? So Are you ready? I am ready for the missions. So, for people that don't know, Damon, what are your missions and what explain explain them and maybe just give us a little a little blurb. Thank you for not saying challenges. <laughs> Thank you for that. They are missions. They are missions. The difference you ask between a challenge and a mission? A challenge is something that you try to do. Mm -hmm. A mission is something that you have to do. Totally different. Yeah. There is no gray area when it comes to missions. So I was playing one on one with my boy, you know Ash. Yep. Ash Breyer. And we was playing, and like Ash is 20 years younger than me, maybe 19, whatever. And this particular day, we was playing one on one at the Eltham Leisure Center. What we normally do, go nine games of one on one, first to five. And I'm not better than Ash, by the way, but I would play the full nine games. This particular day, I quit after like three games. And it's funny because the way I said it, I knew it was bad. Mm. When I knew I was so exhausted, I couldn't play no more, I remember going, I said, hey, Ash, um, I'm not going to be able to continue. <laughs> he looks at me like, what? What do you mean? I was like, um, if I was to continue, I probably could pass out. <laughs> He's like, you quitting? Like, I was like, it was, it was the lowest point. Yeah. It was Detroit all over again. Uh. It was the end of my NBL career. All rolled up into one. I got home, said to my wife, said, I said, Lisa, I just quit. I said, when did I go soft? When did that happen? Oh, you're 45 or 46. You know, you, Ash is 20 years younger than you. I was like, no, 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 no. You're missing a point. I quit. So as that happened, I just had started. A mate of mine told me about David Goggins. Ah. Uh, the mm -hmm. Navy SEAL, the former Navy SEAL, arguably the toughest man walking earth. He goes, man, you got to get this book. So I get this book and it's called Living with the SEAL actually by Jesse Itzler, about David Goggins. Yeah. Read the book and I was like, ooh, oh, that's the blueprint. Oh, you gotta suffer. Oh, and so all this, I said, okay, I'm gonna have a mission. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, this is it. As everybody says on January 1st of every year, <laughs> that's it. Now I'm getting serious. <laughs> I still got the video of my little chunky ass running no. around the oval <laughs> five times. I was like, I'm gonna do this every day. I'm gonna go up a lap every day. Yeah. And that's how I kind of started. And then the things that I learn about myself during a mission is just, I just have epiphanies. Yeah. So what was your first, that was your first mission was just running around an oval every day? Like I started with five laps of the oval mm -hmm. and I would say it was January. So I'm going to go up a lap every day and then I'm going to do 10 chin-ups Yeah. and go up 10 for the month of January every day. This was now, 2020? 2021. Okay. So we're in lockdown. Everybody, I'm working from home. I got time. Yeah. So six laps, seven, next day, eight. I remember when I got up to around 15 laps, I was sitting, I was going to bed early. My body's like, what is this? Yeah. What it was going on? I was, stuff was hurting. I remember calling my buddy in Ballarat E. I said, man, how the hell am I going to run 22 laps tomorrow? Yeah. How am I going? I don't know how I'm going to do it. And eventually I would just kind of keep going. Next yeah. thing you know. So, by the time it finished, I think the last day was like a 35 lap day, mm -hmm. which I think worked out to be about 12 Ks. Yeah. 12 and a bit. So it's interesting because like you said it a little bit like, oh, how am I going to do this? I don't know how I'm going to do this. And I remember having this conversation with you when we were, you, you had just completed some sort of mission. We were talking about when you have that initial thought, oh, I don't want to do it. You have to do it. You just have to do it. If you are lying in bed and you think, oh, I really don't want to get up and do it, you have to do it. Mm. The moment I don't want to do ba 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 comes out of your mouth, you have to do it. Exactly. Tell me why. Because them your demons. Because we're wired for comfort. Mm -hmm. We're wired to be comfortable. Can you just turn the heater up? A little bit colder here. Can you turn the heater down? It's a little too hot in here. Can I get a glass of water? It's supposed to be dry. This shirt don't fit. Can, you, can I get a smaller size? My short. Everything is about comfort, right? Yeah. As soon as you remove comfort from people, yep. they freak out. Yep. And the real character is exposed. Mm -hmm. And that I found out is called emotional resilience. Yep. I didn't have that term in my mind before. It was physical toughness, mental toughness. That was it. And I was physically tough. I was mentally tough. And physically tough is, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, ooh, ooh, I can take that. Yeah. Mentally tough is, yeah, I can. I don't have a problem thinking about that. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. I, yeah. I get it. 
But emotional toughness, yeah. emotional resilience, now we talking. Yeah. Because when you don't want to do something, them your emotions. Yep. I don't want to get up. It's too cold outside. It's too wet outside. Mm-hmm. My shoes, man, my feet hurt. That's emotional, right? Yeah. And we cave to that desire. Yeah. So that desire is what made me quit against Ash. Yeah. Because I didn't want to keep pushing. You know why? Because it hurt. It hurt. It hurt physically. Yep. And I was like, I can't deal. I can't deal. I had no resilience. I couldn't tough it out. I couldn't take them ass whoopings for another four games. <laughs> I quit. So now, here's another thing. Because of our dis- strong desire for comfort, yeah. we don't make decisions. I can hear it in people's language all the time. Hey, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm thinking about doing this. Well, maybe I'll do this. You know what? Probably one day I go, are you going to do it or not? Yep. Like, how come you won't make the decision? I noticed that. So here I am. I'm trying to concoct a devious mission. Yeah. I'm trying because January finished. February, my body's cooked, but I need something for March. And I'm mm-hmm. sitting here thinking about tough stuff. I was like, man, don't do that. That's too hard. I was like, what? Who said that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? I said, oh, then my demons, they don't want me to do it. Yeah. What? I have to do it. This yeah. has been happening all my life. There's that voice mm-hmm. that says, be careful. You might hurt yourself. You're too old. Take it easy. Go it's slow. Yeah. It's co- Why don't you wait for the... I yeah. was like, oh, that's what makes me hesitate to make a decision. So now the number one thing is make a decision. Say yeah. it. Say it out loud. I'm going to do it every day. Yep. So now once I've said it, you now I got to police it. And this is what happens. When, see, that's this is the difference with a mission and a challenge. If you say I'm going to do it every day, I'm going to challenge myself to do this every day. And then you take a day off. It's like, eh. I, I'll start again later. Yeah. Nah. You ever hear those people when they talk about a goal that they're setting or um, say person X says that they want to go to the gym every day or they want to eat healthier every day. But if this happens, it would be okay. They like allow yourself shortfall, I guess. Like, so oh, I'm going to eat well this week. But if on Sunday grandma makes this, I will eat it. And that won't disrupt this said plan that I have. Being in a mission and holding yourself to that, tell me about the hardest day that you've had in one of your missions. Or some of, actually, you've told me about a few of your hard days. Tell me about one of the stories you have where people can really understand what emotional uh, resilience you had to go through and physical and mental. Maybe one of those stories with your little carry bag on and one of those, like what was that moment for you? Yeah, so many of them. Um, When everything started to hurt, right? Like there's one thing in being sore, but then there's actual some serious pain. Like, say for example, I I had some strain in my calf. I got to go up a hill. This this particular mission, I had to run up this hill, and I had to go up a lap every every other day, and I was wearing a 20 kilo vest. Mind you, I was going in the other odd the other day. I was running 15 k's with no vest, mm-hmm. and I initially said, "Why don't you run the 15 k's with the vest?" And you know what? I said, oh, you don't want to run up the hill with the vest. Now you got to run up the hill with the vest. And that's how you structured it. So now I hurt my calf. And I'm thinking, did I just tear my calf? Is it torn? I was like, oh, man, it's hurting really bad, right? So what do I do? What do I do now? Here here you are, Damon. Maybe you should go home and have a look at this calf. Maybe you should go to the physio. Maybe you should go to the doctor. I don't know. Is something right with it, though. I said, now I got to finish there yeah. is no not finishing. And you know what happened? The body adjusted. It adapted. I learned. I was tippy torn up the hill. And I was this, and I was just kind of, I crouched down low. And all of a sudden, I found a, a way to run yeah. that didn't completely. <laughs> Strain. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I'll worry about this later. Yep. And you know what happens after you do that? You get stronger. Yeah. It's like, ah, that calf couldn't hurt me. You thought that was going to take me out. Now look, did I just do that? I surprised myself for what I could achieve. Oh, Then I'm thinking, oh, my God, what have I been leaving on the table all these years? Um, They say that growth happens in the uncomfortable, right? Growth never happens in the comfortable. Yeah. Growth never happens in the comfortable. No. Like when you are put in situations where you're out of your comfort zone, that is the only place you can actually grow the only place otherwise like you're in this little bubble and you're kind of hitting little edges Mm. and you're kind of like oh i'm trying but like that's what i hit (laughs) and i guess like for for you 
so people can understand the magnitude now of the challenges that you've had, what has been your last three missions? Let me back up to the triathlon mission. Yeah. I had to do, I've never done a tri triathlon before in my life. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to do 10 of them. No, it was eight of them, I think. Eight of them. So I didn't in one, in one month? What was your time? In a month. Like? In yep. a month. Everything is monthly missions. So I had to go buy a bike. I don't have a bike. I haven't rode a bike since I was probably 10 years old. Yeah. Swimming. I haven't swam since I was eight. I know how to swim. My aunt taught me how to swim. And I actually called her. I hadn't spoken to her in a long time. I said, Ollie. She's like, Damon, is that you, boy? <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, guess what? I'm back in the pool. <laughs> I said, but I'm struggling. She said, what you mean? Boy, I taught you how to swim. I said, I was eight. <laughs> <laughs> that was 47 years ago. <laughs> anyway, I get in the pool. I went and got a membership. So now I got to run 10Ks. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the first is a one, one and a half K swim, mm -hmm. 40K bike, 10K run. I got to do eight of those. And I'm on time because I was doing some weekend stuff with NBL. So I had, I couldn't be messing around. My back goes, so I'm on, I'm on K25. Mm -hmm. I go into the little toilet block to fill up my water bottle. I lean over, back goes out. <sighs> Took my breath away. I was like, <gasps> yeah. I was like, <sighs> first thing that came to mind was the mission's compromised, but ain't no quitting. Because yeah. now I'm like, and I joke, and my wife don't like when I joke like this, but I say, they'll find me here. Yeah. Because <laughs> I ain't leaving. Yep. I get back, I pulled the bike down inside so I could get my leg over it. Uh, I get on it. And I'm like, I got 15 more Ks. I mm -hmm. get that done. The hill to get home is like this. I get off the bike. I walk the bike up the hill. <laughs> get it home. I lay down on my back in the cave. I'm laying there. And I can't move. I can't move. Like, I'm in, I'm in spasm. I, any, <laughs> I'm laying, I'm going, no. The mission can't die like this. No. Yeah. I said, rise, Damon. I say it out loud too. I talk to myself all the time. Yeah. Rise, Damon. Mm -hmm. Do you know how bad you have to be to get up from this situation? Look at this, man. This this the perfect cop out. Everybody would understand. Yeah. Oh, well, Damon, that's okay, man. Your back went out. You got to dodge your back. Nope. I rose and I got out there and I just shuffled them 10 Ks. And with each K, I get closer to 10 yeah. and I would get stronger. I go, oh my God, look at you, man. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So that 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 is what emotional resilience in action looks like, yeah. But it's also the language I use. Yeah, talk to me about that because I like when when you for for outsiders first hearing about this stuff, they're like, "Man, this guy's crazy! Like, look what he's doing to his body." Blah, blah, blah. How does these physical physical like challenges that you face, like your back spasming or um, running through pain and all that stuff, how does that help you emotionally and mentally? Mm. Give me the correlation. Okay. And first, let me go back and answer your question because I didn't answer it. My yeah. last mission was I had to run with my weight vest, 25 kilos around my block. And you see my block. Yeah. You've seen that hill. I got to go do it once. And every other day, I got to do it at a lap. So yeah. eventually, it was going to be 12 of them. Yeah. That's what 25 kilos. I never carried that much weight. The other days, I had to run a half marathon with 20 kilos. I've never ran a half marathon with that much weight. The previous was 15 kilos. I was like, I'm going up five. Yeah. And then, because we had Singapore, yeah. I said, I'm going to run a marathon when I get to Singapore. So my back is just like, you know, by the time I got to like lap six, I'm already, I'm squirming. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this weight vest is like, oh, it's tearing skin off my back. I'm wearing two shirts underneath it and it's, I got to be at work too. Yeah, I got a full, that too. I, I got a job in the real Damon world. David doesn't do this for nah, full gotta, time either. I like, got so I got to get up at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, so I can be get ready for work by seven thirty. I just like to pause and saying I've been encouraging him to make a TikTok where he uh, vlogs about his missions, <laughs> and everyone's not in their head because they think it's a great idea. But continue, continue. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so that was that previous mission, mm -hmm. and it finished in Singapore. And you saw me. We we had the team meeting. Yeah. And I went out and you know running. So anyway, um, what happens when the body hurts? is pain, physical pain, shocks you. Yeah. Emotional pain is devastating too. Oh my God, emotional pain. Oh, what? That's, that's, my heart's broke. Oh, that's emotional pain. Yeah. That hurts. But that don't affect my legs. Yeah. Mental pain, oh, how am I gonna be able to, oh, I'm stressing out. That hurts too. <laughs> Doesn't affect my legs. Yeah. 
physical pain. I got a cramp. Yeah. That hurts. My shoulder blades are inflamed. Mm -hmm. There's no skin on my left sh shoulder blade. Yeah. There's blood there. My toenail, my feet, my feet hurt so bad, honestly, to stand still and not move hurt. Yeah. I was just like, I got to get off my feet. Yeah. That physical pain I noticed really shocks the system. I was like, uh oh, it puts doubt in your head straight away. Cause you know yeah. why? I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm physically not just uncomfortable. I'm in a extreme discomfort. I want this to stop. Yeah. Cause then that, that's our first, that's our first thought, right? Is like, it's, it's stop. It's stop. Yes. Why? I just don't. Cause we don't like it. We yeah. don't want to be uncomfortable. We damn sure don't want to be in pain. Yeah. Can you stop this please? Let go. That hurts. Mm -hmm. Now I go, ah, physical pain. Welcome. Yeah. And then I visualize a physical pain beam. Mm -hmm. And I visualize him kicking my door in. Poof, what's up in here? Yeah. What you doing? This physical pain. You yeah. scared, huh? Yeah. And I go, hey, physical pain. <laughs> here he it is. Let's, hey, let's talk. Yeah. Let's go. So I sit there and I go, okay, I got to chat. Now I got to be able to focus. I got to go somewhere else. So instead of thinking about, oh my God, I got another 25 Ks to do. I was running, eight, oh, sorry, the other mission, I had to run 80 Ks twice. Yeah. And I ran 76 of those Ks on my street, just, and I'm in agony. But as, but each K, I'm thinking, how am I gonna run another? Yeah. How am I gonna get, and I would just go, see that tree over there? Get to the tree. Yep. Get to the tree, go, yes, turn around. Get to the house. And then I would notice my legs, even though I'm feeling all these emotions, yeah. I look down on my legs and go, they still moving. Yeah. They're fine. Mm -hmm. It's the emotions that ain't fine. But doing missions like this, calluses makes my emotions harder. Yeah. So now it's gonna take a whole lot more discomfort to really rattle me. So I'm yeah. thinking, what if I can do that, what else could I do? Yeah. I'm gonna keep up in it. I'm gonna yeah. find out. So how did you change your your that mental that mental monologue, right? Because we all have it. Everyone like everyone has that little voice in their head that tells them to stop doing stuff when it gets hard or to, that tries to give you outs or it just talks to you while you do day-to-day -day life, right? How and because also this this comes into like the negative self-talk too. Like it's such a negative place in people's heads sometimes. I say people, I am people. Me as people, guys. <laughs> it is a negative place in there. And so to to be able to change that mental thought process to like, oh, I can't do this or how am I going to do this to like, Damon, just get to that next spot. Was that something you read about? Or was that was that part of like the Navy SEAL, like just choosing the next focal point? Because like choosing the next focal point takes away from like the the, the the scariness of your own thought because you're only thinking about that tree, you know? Like, mm. how did you learn how to do that? Each question keeps getting better and better. <laughs> you're so good at this. <laughs> this this the, this the very interesting part mm -hmm. is natural. Yeah. It happens automatically. I'll go into the missions petrified. How am I going to do it? But let me back up. I go into the mission with a statement. Like the mission statement. Okay. Just yep. like everybody got a mission statement in their business. My mission statement is I will die before I quit. Yep. There is no quit in me. Yep. Quit don't live here no more. That's the statement. Yep. Everything now supports that, right? Okay. So now when it hits the fan, when I'm really hurting and I'm thinking, uh oh, I'm in trouble here, I go, yeah, but you ain't quitting. <laughs> yeah. So what's the other option? What's the alternative? Now I got to find a way. It unlocks the find a way part. Yeah, part of your brain. We don't never get to the find a way part. Yeah. We get to the excuse making part. Yep. The blame part, mm -hmm. the scapegoat part. Mm -hmm. We don't get to the find, figure it out part. If you sat there long enough, good ideas pop up. Yeah. So I'm running and all of a sudden, I'm like, hey, oh, oh, mission finishes. I'm like, oh my God, I just did that. Yeah. Now the mission finishes. Boom. I'm on mission 12. Yeah. All of a sudden, I think different. My buddy just told me the other day, he goes, do you know you you walk different, you talk different, your land, everything is different because of these missions. Mm -hmm. And I said, I did, that wasn't what the intention was. The intention was to get in shape Yeah. because I was soft because I quit yeah. against Ash. That was the mission. But I mean, you that realized was, that you weren't just physically soft, that you were mentally soft, right? Yeah. The, the emotional knowledge came a little bit later. I didn't, I didn't understand the correlation between emotions at the time. It, yeah. During mission one, I was starting to dabble. Mm -hmm. I was just starting to dabble, right? By now, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm on mission 15. I know now, and I said to my buddy, I go, this is, a pr this is just a byproduct. If you put yourself in hell long enough, 
your body will transform. Yeah. Your mental, emotional, and physical body will adapt. And that's what we don't think will happen. We yeah. think, oh, it's too cold out here. I'm going to die. Yeah. You know what happened? You'll be out there, you know, you just kind of, hmm, what time is it? Yeah. Oh, I forgot, I forgot my toes was numb. I forgot. Yeah. All of a sudden, that resolve just happens. Mm -hmm. But you got to be prepared to suffer to get to that point, though. Yeah. It's so true because it's like the, the the comfort and all of that stuff. It's all rooted in this little thing called fear, right? So we fear being uncomfortable. Mm. We fear that. And a lot of the, that time, the fear comes from the fear of failure. And for me, that's what my fear comes from. Mm. I, I, I don't go as hard as I can in one certain area or I, I, I don't take that shot in a game or I don't make that connection with a teammate because I'm I have a fear. I'm scared. Mm. Like, and, and so when you're making decisions out of fear, I, it just it, it doesn't get you to the right spots because that's not you making decisions. That's fear making decisions. That's not you. That's not me. I'm not making the decision not to do this. I'm not making this decision. That is my fear. So for you, how has implementing these missions taught you how to not make decisions out of fear or taught you that you have it in your past life and you continue to or how has that come up in this journey of yours? You ready? Yes. Talk to me. Fear don't matter. Yeah. I know this now. You're right. When we scared of something, we run from it. Mm -hmm. Do you hear that? Oh, and then you run the other way. Fear makes you leave when all the action is right here. You need to stay. All this stuff going on around. Oh my God. I go, no, stay in it. Just stay in it. Yeah. It's not that scary after all. You be in the dark for so long, your eyes start to adjust. It's like, oh, I can see. You got to stay in it though. So how do you stay in it when you're scared? Yeah. Go back to your mission statement. I ain't quitting. Yeah. I ain't quitting. Done. Simple. It is so. It is that simple. Damon, why don't you come in? Um, your favorite show's on. Why don't you come in and eat? Uh, somebody just made a phone call for. No, I'm not leaving here. It is. I I can't put in the words to resolve. When I say that, ain't nothing else. Nothing else matters. Yeah. I mean, it it would take a literal act of God. Yeah. To make me go. What? It was a storm. Yeah. It was a hot lightning thunder and pissing down rain and I shouldn't be out here. And my wife looking at me like, are you nuts? She goes, it's a storm. Yeah. You know what I said? I am the storm. <laughs> I'm the storm. You know, I've got that tattooed on my back. Like I'm dead serious. <laughs> I, have, I have the the devil whispers, you can't withstand the storm. The warrior replied, I am I, the storm. I, I have that tattooed storm. on my back. Yes. So I'm gonna. I'm like this. Mother Nature is that all you got? Yeah. Is what you think that thunder gonna? No, I got. I'm on a mission. Mm -hmm. The mission is a pass fail. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean. I don't leave any room for interpretation. There's yeah. no room for. Ah, right, maybe next time. Yeah. Oh, I came close this time. Well, I'm gonna get you next time. No, I'm getting you right now. Yeah. Today. So that happens over the course of putting yourself in uncomfortable positions. Mm -hmm. And I ain't talking about uncomfortable like oh this shirt's a little tight. I'm talking about where you where that doubt creeps in. Yeah. Because that's when you find out yeah. who you are. Because that fear that you were talking about, that will rule you. It becomes a habit. It does. It you, does. You, yeah. you don't even know you're doing it. Yeah. The habit will be that strong. And the emotional side of things never gets factored into. It's like, and like I said, I might have said to you before about the, the whys, the five yeah. whys. Why am I scared? Answer that. Why is that? Why is that? If you get to the fifth why, you get to the core of the problem. Yeah. And then it's a matter of, do you have what it takes to overcome it, or are you happy? So that's when I would make a decision, and these de missions were getting tougher. And if I said to myself, if I've identified a soft aspect of me, an aspect I don't like, yeah. and I don't do nothing about it, what does that make me? Yep, I can't be. I can't live that way. Yeah, I think it, it takes it takes enough to be able to actually see something that you don't like about yourself. Most people just go like this, mm. you know. Most people just cover their eyes and go, "Oh, I don't want to yeah, see it." Yeah, don't look over here. Exactly, or just make an excuse for it. But I, there is something I want to ask you about because um, I remember, and I've also I've driven past Damon while he's doing one of his <laughs> runs, his missions. He's running and he is talking to himself <laughs> out loud. And if you roll down the windows, you'll hear like. 
I'm fucking bad. Like, I, I got this shit. Like, he's running and he's like, that's positive self talk. Mm. That's out loud. And yeah. like, so I, you know, my psychologist tells me, and I was telling you about this when we were in row 59 mm. having our little chats, is that one of the things she gets me to do is when I stand in front of the mirror in the morning, is like, actually say nice things to myself. And that sounds so surface level, right? Like, look at yourself in the mirror and say, like, you are good. Like, you are nice. Enough. Yeah. But like, it's hard. Now try doing that in those uncomfortable situations. Yeah situations yeah. and i i mean i run i don't run 80 k's but i like running i like I, I go on my little 10 12k runs and i i don't listen to music when i run either Good. um because i like to process the thoughts that go into my head and that's something we spoke about last year yep. um was when you run you said to me try and run without music and i tried and now i can't <laughs> run with music mm. so it's it's the it's the once i get a thought into my head and then actually figuring that out but then it's like as I'm turning around to, you know, home stretch or like if I want to give a bit, I'm like, God, I'm fast. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm so strong. Oh, yeah. And that's not just in running. That's in when I do basketball stuff like that out loud, positive self-talk. Yeah. How has that affected you? And at what point in your missions did you actually implement that? And do you implement it in other areas of your life now too? I do. I, everything now is that I feel like it's two diamonds. I feel like there was pre-mission diamond mm -hmm. and now there's post-mission diamond. I'm I'm different. I'm different. There's elements that you might see in post-mission diamond. Did you guys saw signs of that in pre-mission diamond? Yeah. Yep, there was there was signs. There was bones there, but it wasn't mature. And all it took was to rattle me, and then I'd fall over. If you upset me, this is emotional resilience again. All you had to do is upset me. If you did something I didn't like, if you did something I was confused with, if you did something I just didn't agree with, I'm like, what, what are you doing? I ain't doing that. I had attitude. Like, what? That don't make no sense. Then I would go out of my way to prove to you how little sense it made. <laughs> This is emotional immaturity. Yeah. And this is what I notice in humans. Yeah. In the adult humans. Yeah. All I got to do is rattle your cage. Yeah. That's all I got to do. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, my cage, I'm going to rattle my own damn cage. I want to rattle my own cage. It's raining outside. Ooh, shit, I better hurry and get out there. Yeah. And I'm thinking rain harder. Rain harder. Yeah. So now I'm out there and the shit's hitting the fan. And now who out here to go? You know, when I finish... Hey, Damon, good job. I'll post something on Instagram. Oh, Damon, man, you're inspirational. You All these nice compliments. Where are those compliments at five o'clock in the morning when there's a storm out there? Where they at? They are nowhere. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, they don't really matter. They, they're nice and I, and I appreciate it. But what am I saying to myself? Yeah. I got to be my own cheerleader. Mm -hmm. I can give myself goosebumps. Yeah. I can just clap myself up. You know what I learned this from? My high school coach. Yeah. And when I was in 11th grade, he came in, we were all stretching before practice and coach said, damn blue, our, our, our colors was blue and white. So he called us blue. Yeah. He's like, damn blue, we gonna, we, gonna, we gonna practice like this, man. We gotta set the tone. We gotta get it hyped in here. Come on fellas, talk it up, bring some energy. And we all sitting around going, we don't know what to say. Yeah. So we go, yeah, Johnny. Hey, Pee Wee. <laughs> yeah, I see you over there, Eddie. All of a sudden, a coach we walking by though. Come on, Pee Wee. Yes, sir. We're going to get live today, Blue. Come on, fellas. And all of a sudden, we hyped. Yeah. So now I'm by myself and I'm running this dark and I'm just, come on, Damon. No, man. You got this, Damon. Look at you out here, Damon. They didn't see this coming, big fella. You got this. And all of a sudden, that bought me time yeah. to get my second win. Yeah. That to ride some momentum mm -hmm. as opposed to, how many Ks I got to go? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. we'll talk like that to ourselves too. Yeah. But I would never say that out loud. Yep. I brought Cleo with me on one. You know Cleo. Yep. We was bear crawling. Yep. I know this story. Continue. We yep. bear crawling. And I'm struggling. I went 100 meters and had to stop four times. It hurt that bad. I was like, oh my God, these bear crawls for real. I eventually started bear crawling. So me and Cleo would go around the oval. 1.6 Ks. And I'm about to just collapse because apparently I found out the human being isn't supposed to be bent over like a bear for long. <laughs> <laughs> it's not healthy to the human body. Not healthy to the humans. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just about to collapse. And Cleo goes, no, dad. I was like, oh. I'll pop back up. I, said, I got a little bit more. And we talked on the way home. I said, if had you not said that, I was going down. Yeah. You brought me back up. I should have said that myself. But we get so caught up in our own misery that we can't talk. Yeah. So I'm, I learned, I'm teaching myself how to talk when I'm miserable. Yeah. Because anybody can talk when you're happy, when the sun's shining. Anybody can do that. But talk when it's, you know, when it's drama filled. Yeah. 